Hey everyone, Mike here. I just wanted to do a quick video today on NSXT edges and kind of what they are. A very high level overview before I get into kind of some of my videos around actually deploying them. Now first, you'll notice I'm wearing a hoodie and, uh, and I'm, I'm not talking super loud and that's because it is 7.26 in the morning. Uh, and you'll probably see there's a ladder behind me. I was up on that thing at midnight last night with smoke alarms going off, uh, bad batteries, that kind of thing. And uh, I've got kids sleeping right now, so I guess I'm saying that because, you know, whatever your situation is, you know, you're busy, you don't feel good, you have too many, you know, too much work to do, or, you know, uh, whatever, you can always find time to prioritize the things that are important to you. And, and for me, you know, learning has always been important to me, and I've always found time. And Honestly, I'm not a morning person, so this is tough. So I'm here because I love what I do, and I want to share it with you guys. So that said, let's get started. Kind of looking at the left here, um, we have you know these different racks, and within each rack, uh, we have these leaf switches. These are physical switches in the environment. They could be Cisco, Brocade, Dell, whatever they are, Juniper. Um, and then below those, connected to those switches, we have uh, these boxes. These are vSphere hosts. These are actually running VMware ESXi slash vSphere on each of these boxes. And on each of those boxes, there's a number of VMs running. In this case, we're just depicting a few, uh, but these are just standard VMware ESX boxes. So whenever I say host going forward, I'm referring to these specifically, these vSphere hosts. Now, if you look over towards the right, you'll see that we have kind of these two racks on the right. <clears throat> Uh, excuse me. You'll see we have these two racks on the right, and we've got kind of the blue top rack switches. The reason these are blue is this is kind of the management slash infrastructure rack. And all that's used for, as you'll see here, there's like uh, vCenters here, there's some management components being run in this rack. And in addition to that, there's also a couple of hosts that are kind of dedicated for uh, edge connectivity or north-south connectivity. Now, these are just hosts that are going to house the NSXT edges that we're about to talk about. You don't have to have dedicated servers for these edges. You certainly can, but you don't have to. That's not a requirement by any means. The reason that you would have a dedicated server is really centered around performance. The reason you would have a dedicated server is really centered around performance. Uh, maybe you don't want contention with other VMs running on that same host. Maybe you want all the network bandwidth just for those edges. Um, whatever the case is, that's the reason you might have a dedicated pair of those vSphere hosts. But again, not required. You could just as easily put the edges that we're talking about on one of these vSphere hosts, and it would be just fine. So keep that in mind. So you'll see in our case, We've got these, the green vSphere host, which I'm gonna call our edge host. And then on top of that, we have this, this green VM. This is our edge VM. So the edge, whenever we talk about NSXT edges, it's just a VM that is a container, uh, essentially, or a, a pool of capacity is a better way to think about it. So you have the VM right here, this is the edge VM. And inside of it, you could have multiple virtual routers living inside of it. It's also responsible for centralized services. That's where we're gonna run things like BGP, um, NAT, north-south firewalling at NSX is done on the edge. So if we write a policy and say, you know, block ICMP into anything in the NSX environment, that would be enforced at the edge. Now, if we wrote a policy that said, in this case, don't let the green network talk to the orange network, that's gonna be enforced at the distributed router level, which is on every single host. So when we talk about these edges, the process to, to deploy them is relatively simple. They're just a VM. Uh, but from a traffic flow standpoint, I wanted to kind of show you guys this. So this is basically what it looks like. So when we talk about edges, uh, they're the on-off ramp for the entire environment. So there is one notable exception, which is if I'm doing a VLAN back network, in other words, I'm using NSX, but I'm just creating a standard you know, VLAN 52 port group essentially, and I'm connecting a, a VM to it, when that VM sends an ARP out, it's going to wait for a response from the physical network. NSX will have nothing to do with it at that point. In that case, edges are not even required if you're doing that. Now, if you're doing overlay networking, then edges are required, and that's what you're seeing on this slide here. So this only applies to overlay networking in NSX. 
So when this, this green VM wants to talk, it's going to actually route, there's a routing table on the host it sits on and it's going to route to its edge and the edge will then decapsulate the traffic and send it out to the physical network. Now the edges, it's important to note that they can be a whole number of you know, combinations from an, a high availability standpoint. They can be active-active, they can be active-standby. We can actually do up to eight active-active edges uh, for very, very high throughput, uh, which is really the reason why a lot of people don't have to have a dedicated server for the edges. Uh, and typically when we talk about a dedicated server in NSXT, it's called a bare metal edge. And that really means you, you basically have a physical server and you're dedicating it just for edge functionality. Now I'm going to do a video shortly that will actually detail all of this and how to actually deploy it. And I think it'll make a lot more sense. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys a very high level overview of what the edge is for, why is it there, when is it required, when is it not required. Hey, before you guys go, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Have a good one.